got to learn how to block it. You cannot let those factors determine the rest of your life. Amen. Welcome to Livestream. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Plains, with my co-host, Jeremy Applegate. Welcome. Hey, Doc. How you doing? How you Fancy doing? seeing you here. How you doing, brother? Good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Hey, I have a question. I want to jump right into this because this is, this is something that um, is interesting to me. Should I be worried? Maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, like, we talk a lot about motivation and we talk a lot about influence and we talk a lot about leadership and everything that goes into it. And, and it's all incorporated into an entrepreneurship. And right? building the right culture. Right? Building the right culture. Absolutely. I mean, my question, how do these, how do these like motivational speakers like Tony Robbins and those guys, how do they get that message out there? What do you think that is? I definitely think it's through their voice and, yeah. and you know, the way they dictate their message, how consistent they are with their message. If you notice, they don't deviate what they're trying to accomplish to their listeners. That's true. It's interesting that you said they do it through their voice because I think that's that's pretty that's pretty relevant too with these guys. Like they're never they're never giving their message on a monotone level. You know they're they're enthusiastic and and they you know wave their hands and do crazy stuff and raise their voice and do all this other stuff and and um, I think that's a that's part of the that's part of the presentation, right? That's part of the the motivation. That's the way they articulate. Yeah, it's interesting. I just, you know, I've been watching um, a lot of YouTube, obviously, because, you know, we have a podcast now, and, well, you have a podcast, and I'm the sidekick, but, um, you know, it's a situation where I al you always kind of, like, want to reflect on other other people's successes, and, you know, and, and I always wonder, like, how do they do that, and, how, and did they, were they always like that? Like, how do you, were you always this motivational, inspirational person? No. You know, you had to develop those skills, right? You had to develop them, and I think it's all with, by doing inner work and also learning from the best, like yeah. Tony Robbins um, and Dean and a lot of these other public speakers that are amazing at what they do. I mean, Tony Robbins' industry is worth a billion dollars. I mean, literally. Did he really sit there and say, okay, I mean, he's a lion, so he might have done this. Like, my goal is to make a billion dollars. I don't think he's focused on the money, actually. No. I not think, now, probably. Huh? I think he's focused on, on getting his, you know, his purpose, and he's doing it by his voice. Yeah, I, I think, I like how you said that. I like how you said that. You know, you he's know, passionate about that stuff, right? I was reading a book of Tony Robbins, actually, about um, what is the most important, important characteristics that a president of the United States needs to have. Mm. They, okay. they got to put themselves together, yeah. obviously look, you know, presentable. They got to look good. You know, if it's appealing to the eye, they get more voters and how they how they articulate and how they speak to their to the, you know, to their states in the country. So, again, it goes back to the voice. It goes back to to your voice. How do how how do people, you know, you know, Barack Obama was awesome. Yeah. And you know why he was awesome? Because his words created a situation where he thinks he can shape the world. Right. He believed in that. His message was so powerful. Yeah. You know, he was he was great at that. When you want to shape people, like how do you how do you do that as an influencer, as a as a motivational guy? How do you do that? Personally? I, per I personally think that you got to believe in what you're saying. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of guys that do a lot of fluff. Yeah. You know, I'm great at this. I'm great at that. But are you really? I yeah. mean, the proof is in the pudding. Um, I don't talk about something or I don't give a message to somebody unless I, I'm very familiar with the topic. That's true. That's true, and you're passionate about it. You know what I mean. I think that makes a difference too when people are using their voice to uh, provide information or to provide motivation and influence. I think that you know you have to be passionate about what you're talking about. You have to be knowledgeable and educated. You know about what you're talking about. You know, I certainly want want to listen to you talking about uh, brain surgery. You know <laughs> what I mean. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's important that uh, that all those characteristics are are part of of using your voice as the instrument, you know, to, uh, to create that situation. That's right. And what do you think is another thing that, other than your voice, that you can use to engage your team or engage the public? Well, I think that, uh, I think that, you know, we talk a lot about the voice and we talk a lot about language. I think part of language is body language too, right? You know, you got to, you have to have. Confidence. Confidence and you have to, like, 
nobody's ever seen Dr. Plains and I speak at a meeting before, <laughs> but when we speak, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're in it. We're in this. And if you don't believe us, we are going to keep talking until you believe That's great. Us. There's a lot of emotion behind yeah. it. We are definitely stating our message, yeah. but we believe in it, and we want the listeners to to be captivated by this message. Absolutely. We, we from, from, a, from a public speaker standpoint, we want to be memorable, right? We want them to take what, we, what we've put in, in our voice and given to them. We want them to take that and put that into practice. That's know, right. Once they leave. It's very important about the practice. You yeah. got to get, you got to practice what you preach. And it's important, you know, t- that you speak with others, you know, and it's important that um, you, part of sharing your voice is sharing your experience, right? It's all, you're, you're sharing yourself with other individuals. My you're goal, being vulnerable, I guess. Exactly. My goal is to now, like, you know, do you ever get that little voice and 90% of the time is negative? Yes. What do you do about that? I'm trying to say, fuck it, and I'm going to block it completely. That's what you do. I mean, you literally say that because it's not a situation that, you know, it just doesn't work. Like, that is that does not fit in my life. So the negativity is, you know, you can think about it, and you, nine, you probably nine out of ten thoughts a day are negative. But how you choose to react to that thought changes how your day finishes. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So, no, we ain't dro- we ain't messing with that negativity shit. We are all about positivity, dropping the hammer, being a lion, setting those goals, accomplishing those goals. And hey, you're not gonna all accomplish those goals all the time, right? You're not gonna do that. No, you're not. But you get up and you do it all over again. Amen. That's what Preach. you gotta do. So yeah, that's been one of my biggest challenges is getting rid of that negative voice because that thing wants to hold you back. Yeah, and it it like won't go away. <laughs> so I, you know, I've been talking to my friend David, and David says, you know what I do? I don't listen to that voice anymore. So what I do is I put AirPods on or a headset on, and I listen to 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 positive um, messaging. That's interesting. And I work on myself, and that has helped me block out that voice. Hey, by the way, you're gonna be proud of me. What did you do? I started listening to podcasts. You did about self improvement and uh, actually I saw harmonizing you the other yourself. Day. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. See, my message is working somehow. Hey guys, <laughs> it works. All right, let's go. I'm an example right here. I want to see you in a year. Yeah. Mark this day. Mark this day. What is today? The August nineteenth, twenty twenty two. Well, we'll see in a year how you're doing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, I mean, you know, getting back to like. The message and and how do you separate yourself from from other people that do that message? Like, how do you? Because there's forty seven people that be have the same message or being negative. Yeah, no, about um, um, motivation and, and and inspiration. How do you separate? Think, or how how do you separate yourself from the guy down the street? So I don't sure. think you need to separate yourself. I think you just got to make it what works for you. Yeah. I think you got to build it to you. I mean. You listen to Tony Robbins and all these other guys, it's almost pretty much the same message. You just got to make it your own. And I think that you, you kind of just naturally separated yourself from the person down the street, right? Because you're just being you. And everybody else is, every, everybody's different on an individual level. Yeah, you can't change, you know, no, no matter w- how successful you are, you, you, you can't let that get to your head. And you Bingo. Gotta, and you got to stay humble and you got to stay aware of your surroundings and where you came from and where you're going and you all got to you got to understand that you will make mistakes and there will be people that will bring you down with their voice yep and you got to learn how to block it you got to learn how to block it you cannot let those factors determine the rest of your life amen you said it awesome there you said you know external factors you have to keep them away or at a at a minimum and they will they like and that you might, voice. and you might and you might have to get rid of you know, people that are very important to you in your life, yep. you know, friends, family, most of the time, sometimes the closest people to you are your worst enemies yeah. in regards to not that they mean bad, but they're just giving you a bad message. Yeah. And, you know, I think that part of that message is sharing your story. Right. And I think that's what separates you from everybody else. You know, we really had an impactful uh, uh, podcast uh, a few uh, a few podcasts ago when you when you shared your story. You know, people are like, oh, my gosh, you know, you really came from nothing. And, you know, now you've made, you've made something. Yeah, most yourself. people think that you need to come from money or wealth yeah. or success or, 
you know, parents that are doctors or attorneys in order to be successful. I mean, most of most people that are driven and are on another level, they really didn't come from much. All of, I mean, look at our guests. I started with $200. I started with $50. I started here. I start, Nobody said, yeah, well, you know, I came in. I had family money. We had $50 million, and look what I'm doing now. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. There, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that are driven with money, but I would say that most people that are driven come from nothing. I yeah. mean, you look at Grant Cardone. I mean, Grant Cardone has built this mass wealth. He's a great example. After 46 years old. So it's never too late. He's a great example. It's never too late. You can, you know, you can start a plan even if you're, you know, in your 60s to create wealth in 10 years. And I think it's part of the process of, like, I'm risking it all, you know. And, yeah, can you start over? Absolutely. But at this moment in my life, I'm risking it all. And I think that's the, that separates the people who have limited um, opportunity versus those guys who have $50 million sitting in the bank. That's right. If you're worried about – I lose $100, you cannot be in business. Right. You shouldn't be in business because you're going to be so stressed that, you know, you're not going to be able to handle it. Right. I agree. I agree. you got to be willing to take risk. That's most of it. That's, that's uh, I mean, I want to, like, say something profound, too, because that was really profound. But, I mean, it's the that's probably one of the most important things. We talk a lot about entrepreneurship, and that is something that needs to be done. You have to take risk. Entrepreneurs take risk every single day, and you should continue to do that for sure. So you got to listen to that voice. You got to keep the positive in yep. and the negative out. You cannot so, let the negative affect you. So, in the in the business world, you know how do you how do you get your voice out there? Like how do you how do you get your voice with your team? How do you get your voice when you're talking to investors? How do you how do you create the situation where you know? Um, People are interested in you. You got to get comfortable where you're normally uncomfortable. Yeah. It wasn't easy for me to, you know, I'm mostly an introvert, you know. Um, you know, I'm very quiet. You're an introvert? Yes, I am. Come on. <laughs> yes, I am. Little by little, I've developed the skills to, you know, be a little bit, you know, be a little bit more of an extrovert. But for a while, talking to all these banks and getting, the first time I told Bank of America, no, I need five practices pre-approved before I moved forward. That took a lot of guts. Yeah, sure did. Because they were like, who are you, kid? You're like 30 years old. What the <laughs> hell are you doing? So, but at the end of the day, you got to believe in your message and your voice and what you stand behind. Belief. And you have to have that tone. you got to have that tone that you believe in you and what you're trying to do. Well, I mean, it's a confidence. It's an assertive thing. It's a, it's a you know, who wants, to, who wants to financially invest in you if you're unsure of what you're doing? Yeah, if you're talking like low yeah. monotone. Hey, I think I might need five million dollars. Um, well, no. How about seven? Well, no. How, how many candidates have we not hired? They might have been great candidates, but we didn't hire them because they were not. You know, you couldn't hear their their message through the interview process. No, a lot, a lot. I mean, that goes like for the listeners. That goes with everything. That goes with life. Like you have to be confident you have to be able to share your voice you have to use your voice you know you can't you can't stand on the sidelines you got to be involved you got to be you know and if people aren't listening then you're not doing it right that's right get uncomfortable be comfortable being uncomfortable and put yourselves in as many uncomfortable situations as you can you know why because that's going to help you be comfortable that's right. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy, for this amazing show. You can follow me on Instagram, Dr. Alex A. Plains, on our podcast and on YouTube and Spotify. Thank you.